Hello, I'm Stacy Gabriel, and I'm the director of the genetic analysis platform at the Broad Institute. My colleagues and I work to read out information from the human genome. We're interested in two kinds of information. First, we want to know the differences between people's DNA sequences that may explain their susceptibility to disease. Second, we want to know which genes are turned on or off in different cell types, or when cells are healthy or when they're not. Let me first tell you how we read out genetic differences between people. The human genome contains some three billion letters of genetic information. This sequence of letters is almost identical between individuals. In fact, it's 99.9% .9 identical, meaning there's about one spelling difference in every thousand letters. We call these small spelling differences single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs for short. Any two individuals differ by about three million SNPs. The collection of variants that a person has, in other words, their genotype, may tell us a lot about a person's risk for disease. So how do we read a person's genotype? We do it using this DNA chip. The glass surface of the chip is covered with DNA fragments arranged in a grid. Each tiny square has a different DNA sequence. Two of these squares have DNA sequences corresponding to alternate spellings of a SNP. One with the A, and the other with the G. The same is true for all other pairs of squares on the chip. Flanking the sites of variability are additional DNA letters. The idea is simple. We take DNA from a person and wash it over the surface of the chip. A binds to T and C binds to G. If the person's DNA has the T spelling, it sticks to this spot. If the DNA has the C spelling, it binds to this spot. And if the person inherited both spellings, one from mom and one from dad, his or her DNA would stick to both spots. Here's how we actually do it in the lab. We take DNA from a person and load it onto a chip. The chip is then placed into a rotating incubator, giving the DNA a chance to find the matching sequence on the chip. The unbound material is then washed away. As you can see, we have a large-scale operation in place here at the Broad. In fact, we routinely process over a thousand of these microarrays a week. Finally, we read the chip using the scanner you see in this display. Inside the reader, a laser scans the surface of a chip to look for where DNA sequences have bound. We can detect binding because we've attached a fluorescent chemical that lights up when a laser hits it. So binding is seen as a spot of light on the chip. A readout of the entire chip looks like this. In this way, we can quickly scan a person's DNA for a million SNPs. But of course, we need to do more than study just one person. We need to compare the genotypes of thousands of individuals with the disease to the genotypes of thousands of individuals without the disease. That way, we can discover which spelling differences are correlated with the disease. But that's just one of the things we can do with this technology. We can also use it to determine which of the thousands of genes in the human genome are turned on in a cell. All of the cells in our body have exactly the same DNA, but a liver cell and a brain cell and different cancer cells turn on different sets of genes. When genes are turned on, they make RNA messages. So to tell which genes are turned on in a cell, we simply look at the population of RNA messages in the cell. For this, we use a slightly different type of chip. This time, the DNA arrayed on the glass surface corresponds to the 20,000 genes in the human genome. We isolate RNA messages from a cell and apply it to the chip. Actually, we first have to turn the RNA back to DNA, but that's just a technicality. We then see which genes light up with strong signals. That means those genes are highly expressed. And which genes light up with intermediate or low signals, meaning they're expressed at low levels or completely turned off. So we can produce a gene expression signature, a kind of genomic barcode, detailing the activity level of each of the 20,000 genes in the genome. We can then study which genes are turned on in, say, a liver cell or a brain cell or in different kinds of cancer, or even when a cell has been treated with a drug. The bottom line is that these little DNA chips have given us the ability to scan quickly through the entire human genome, giving us information that will have a huge impact on understanding the root causes of disease.